welcome to a gorgeous day here in Melbourne and there's the girl who so much is focused on Martina Hingis 16 years old bidding to become the youngest Grand Slam champion in the open era just 16 and uh, four months the youngest of all time Lottie Dodd who was 15 years and 285 days when she won Wimbledon in 1887 which is about the year Bob Hewitt was born Bob alongside me now to watch this final <laughs> thank you Simon I love you too <laughs> well what a what a day we're looking forward to uh, two great players lady in your picture Mary Pierce and she's made the final by dominating her opponents with her power and it's a very natural power she's big and strong but she has such good timing and uh, it looks like she's on the way back after two years in the wilderness she's not a good mover around the court and she's not serving as powerfully as um, we normally see Donna Butler the umpire not serving as powerfully but she's had shoulder problems and she's often flexing her shoulders so that would suggest to me that uh, the shoulder perhaps stiffens up or maybe she's just trying to make sure it remains loose I'm not I don't believe it's it's a problem for her uh, she's a very good front runner but I don't think she's a very good chaser so if she starts off badly she might be in a little bit of trouble her opponent well what can you say about a 16 year old who's um, it doesn't matter what happens at the end of this match she's number two in the world uh, she's not very fast either around the court, is uh, Hingis, but loves her opponents to hit the ball hard, and that's exactly what Mary Pierce loves to do. But what she does, that's uh, Martina's hitting partner from, uh, from Perth. She's always got a different hairstyle every year, and that one's about as bad as I've ever seen. And, and that on the right is Martina's mum. But Martina, in my opinion, reads the play of the opponents perhaps better than any other female playing the game today which is an amazing thing when you again we say that she's only 16 years of age because she's always in position sometimes you get her out of position and, and and her lack of speed shows up but she's so often in position and you say well goodness gracious she must be very quick because she was there it was the fact that she read the play she is a good front runner but can also play catch up she had an easy doubles yesterday, which I think will be in her benefit. I think she has more to offer Mary Pierce in this match, and therefore I'm picking Martina Hingis to win. The number four seed, Pierce unseeded, and whose play in my book hasn't been sensational this year until the semi-final against Mary Jo, where she really did look in super form. Won that 6-1, 6-3. Beat Barbara Rittner in the opening round, straight sets. Lisa Raymond of the States in straight sets. Barbara Shedd of Australian, of Australian straight sets. Alexander Dragomir, tough first set, tight second. Same with Irina Spillet on the quarter-final, and then the match against Mary Jo. Mary Pierce had a tough one in the opening round. It could have gone either way. Seems a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Elena Likotseva of... Russia, 6-4 in the third, then Natalia Medvedeva of Ukraine, straight sets, Makita Kokta, 6-love, six 6-2, six Anka Huber, 6-2, six 6-3, six Sabine Appleman, she was beginning to get in really good form there, straight sets, and then Amanda Kurtz, a tough first set, but uh, wiped her off court in the second. They've met three times before, and Pierce has won all three, but obviously don't forget, Hingis all through those times, even last year in Hamburg when they last met on clay Hingis has been emerging very much so and she's really emerging um, it's hard to say but uh, it, it, I had the impression that for about a year or so she almost stagnating she had improved so quickly and then she stagnated for a while and around about the US Open time which is the first couple of weeks of September she had a good US Open and that seemed to give her the, the push to go up and she hasn't stopped going up since then. She's the youngest Australian Open finalist, not the youngest ever Grand Slam finalist, that was Shriver at the US Open in 78, 16 years and two months. Nerves will play a part, but uh, strangely enough, most focus when we're talking about 
temperament will be on this young lady. She's the one who could be vulnerable. Hingis, despite her youth, we're pretty sure that she's going to be rock solid unless she surprises us here and gets uh, really frightened. It seems unlikely. We've never seen any sign of it so far, but this is a Grand Slam final. Grand Slam final, well, any final is uh, an earth-shattering experience for a tennis player. But uh, a Grand Slam final, I can only imagine what it's like. And uh, I've seen so many players over the years, even players with a vast amount of experience, without necessarily having that experience of playing Grand Slam finals, just simply fold in the final. And I, I would agree with you. I would think that if either of the two players would fold, that would be Mary Pierce. Let's hope neither folds. Let's hope that the match is as good as we hope or certainly expect it will be. Past the crowd. Hengis, who's taken everything in her life in her stride, now faces the biggest test. First set, it's the Swiss to start. No surprise there. Uh, it would be a bit of a surprise if she didn't do it. And that's what she's going to have to do. Get the weaker second serve and give it a bit of a nudge. Pierce is often a very quick starter. Started wonderfully well against Kurtzer and then wobbled a bit. And then came on strong at the end. Often at the start, it's when she's at her least nervous. Well, that was an extraordinary shot. Oh, if you can come up with a few good shots in the first game or two, it's amazing how quickly you can relax. showed composure well, twice uh, on the second point and the fourth point she's had to look up in the air and face a, a, a fairly high lob and she took it without bouncing with them both for winners Just pushing a little extra hard there, and here's Breakpoint Pierce in the opening game. Grand Slam final, finalist in the French, of course, in 94. The winner here two years ago. And she seems to have rhythm today. We know she's got the power. Like Pierce hit that forehand with a little bit too much care, didn't give it a bit of a whack that uh, we would have expected her to have done. Yeah, she's going to dominate rallies for the most part with that power. So much of the match really 
hing hinges on how well she's playing. Third break point. <laughs> Must have just got the outside of the line. I couldn't believe how quickly Martina walked with her. I mean, she's already, she's almost sprinting <laughs> to get the ball. She's not going to have that called out. No. <laughs> she's a very confident young lady, is Hingis. Saw that in her press conference after a semi-final and after a victory in the doubles. She's weathered the storm here. Tough opening game for her. And we take it for granted, don't we? That's the amazing thing about Martina Hingis. You have to keep pinching yourself and looking down at the uh, stats to make sure that she is just 16 years old. Everything just seems to flow with her. It's so natural. Yeah, she's one of those players that um, you want to look at the birth certificate. Uh, and then when you read the birth certificate and you see she's 16, you say, well, uh, this is false. Uh, she does look 16, and uh, there are many things that she does is, is like a 16-year-old. And then she walks on the tennis court, and she's like a 24-year-old, uh, having had eight years of experience. It's just absolutely phenomenal. And, and if you remember what I said in the... Nobody... <laughs> well, okay. Um, when I said at the beginning about Martina Hingis, uh, the one thing I said is that, in my opinion, she reads the opponent's play better than perhaps any other female in the game of tennis today, and she's 16. Yes. Credit her mother with that as well, as obviously there's natural instincts there, both in, uh, in that kind of second nature stuff that you're talking about, but, but her mother has never interfered with that. No. Her mother is a coach as well. Her mother, her mother is encouraging that. And I think her mother's done a marvellous job. Let's mm -hmm. give mother full credit. I mean, she's unreal. Love one. Oh! Love love little ploy of Mary's. Whenever she plays a, a shot she's less than delirious with, is just to bend down, do the shoelaces up a little bit. Give herself a little bit of time to try and compose herself. Well, if we all did that, some of us would be tying our shoelaces all day. best attacking weapon, isn't it, Hingis, the double-hander? Yes, it is uh, a very, very potent weapon. She doesn't have a bad forehand either, but uh, a little bit less power, and perhaps you could read the forehand a bit easier. The backhand, very difficult to read. Pierce looking a little tight. Two break points, Hingis, after saving three herself. a couple of times a lot of muttering down this end but
credit to, to uh, Pierce, she carried on, but importantly, Hingis has the break and leads. Two games to love. And Pierce did look a little tense there. Yes, yeah, she started off the first game uh, in pretty good form, but certainly that game, the nerves hit her. If Pierce were to win this tournament, she would go. That's uh, Mary's coach, Sven Grunfeld. Grunfeld. Difficult for Donna Butler to overrule from there. Let's have a look and see if we can agree with the call. Look line to me. Very close, huh? No doubt about that, though. And we can be sure straight away that Hingis is unfazed by the enormity of this occasion. And getting the luck as well, and a beaming smile. What a start for Martina Hingis. Three love. After a little edgy start against this extraordinary young Swiss girl, love three. <laughs> Yet to drop a set, Mary Pierce, against Hingis in their three meetings. That might be putting a little bit more pressure on Pierce because this is the biggest meeting of the lot. Even the bigger shots are now coming back with interest. Watch how well she reads what, what Pierce is going to do. You can see that she's moving to her right even as Pierce hits the ball. So she's there early, yet she's not fast around the court. Restricted in her movement, and it's the nerves that are doing that. And Hingis totally carefree, and here are three more break points. Oh, well, that was a staggering shot. What gets me about Hingis, Bob, and you alluded to it earlier on about the court craft, is she doesn't seem to do anything special. She's got a good double hander, yeah. It's, you know, there are other girls who've got something better than that, and yet all of a sudden you look down the scoreline, she's four love up, and she's yeah. racing out. Yeah, well, cause, but what she does with, with her double hander, and you, you alluded to the double hander, is that she doesn't do the same thing every time. So it's tough to read what she's doing. It doesn't look that special, but there's the disguise and there's control, like that last backhand was uh, really centimeters from the sideline. Four love. Again, Pierce hit her with an enormous forehand, and it came back deep. Mm -hmm. That's 12 points in a row for Hingis.
When a player is nervous, it makes your feet feel heavy. It makes your feet feet feel like you've got lead weights around your ankles. Mary Pierce is not the best mover. She's very, very slow at this moment. I think this is making her look even slower. Mm -hmm. Third ace. Looks like she was born to the big occasion, and uh, the big occasion seems to be taking its toll on her opponent. What a day it's turning out for Martina Pierce after just 17 minutes is serving to stay in the first set of the final. Now it's a game she needs to win just to, to build up a little bit of confidence and perhaps to relax a little bit. Often it can happen, can't you? Because that's the kind of shot we saw in the opening game. The place was unconscious and then suddenly the enormity of the occasion you're in suddenly gets to you. And she's just tightened up game by game. Perhaps she might be getting a bit looser now. forehand for her. At this stage of the game, you're not worried about the first set. You're worried about getting your timing, relaxing, getting a bit of a feel, and you're worried about a possible second and third sets. Well, definitely a second set, but hopefully a third set. Set up for her favourite shot. Pierce lucky to get away with that. Very much so. Once again, Hingis proving that she can read her opponent because she was moving to the backhand before Pierce hit the forehand approach. a natural mover and hitter of the ball. Well, she gets the body into the ball, hits through the ball, that's where the power comes from. She won the point, but I have to say, it wasn't fun to watch. There's a girl still struggling with herself. Still, I still feel that having won the game, I think she will feel a little bit better. Yeah. She's got to feel much better. I mean, there's nothing worse than uh, playing a final and losing the first set six love. It's yes. That nightmare you were dreaming about is coming to reality. Oh, boy. 5-1, serving for the set. Yes, 
that's what we've grown accustomed to. First double. Martina, intelligent as she is, will know that Pierce is a streak player. Once she hits a streak, anything can happen. Three break points. That's much better hitting from Pierce, who looks as if she's getting back into this match now. It may be too late to save the first set. Often it's in situations like that where a set or even a match looks almost irretrievable, but the tension goes, and Pierce is particularly a player. We notice against Appleman's, where she looked down and out of the match, and suddenly terrific tennis. Yes, Appleman's did freeze to a certain extent, but Pierce came strong when perhaps you least expected it. Well, that's a sign of a champion. That's a sign of, uh, of Mary Pierce at her very, very best. And uh, we thought we saw Mary Pierce two years ago at her best, and uh, perhaps not at her best, but getting better and better. And she's gone off the boil for two years, and now she looks like she's coming back. And hopefully she will continue her rise because she's only good for the game of tennis. Martina Hingis is great for the women's game, so is Mary Pierce. Mary Pierce, were she to win this tournament, she'll be ranked 12 in the world. If she loses, she'll be ranked 14 in the world. The French people will be happy with that, as well as Mary Pierce. As long as Mary remains in that top 16, uh, she'll be seated at the French championships, and that always creates an excitement for the tournament. The problem is, that if the two players are unlucky, they might be meeting each other in a round of 16s, whereas in Australia, they're meeting in the finals. 2-5, serving for the second time to stay in the set. You want to play the moon ball you better do a better job than what mary pierce did and then she was in trouble and what a superb backhand down the line from hingis It's long, it must have been very close. There's no space from here though. Getting plenty of advice. <laughs> that baseline judge didn't call two. Do you remember it's right at the beginning of the match? In that time it was Pierce. Here, Hingis. Let's have another look, see if we can see. Well, if he got the line, it must have been right outside of it. Oh, 
Naughty girl, Martina. Naughty girl. Two set points for Hingis. Well done. Pierce disappointing there, serving to stay in the set, but Pierce knows that that was a high class first set from her opponent. Pierce just had so few answers to whatever Martina was doing to her. It was a superb first set from her, and Pierce did look, though, in those couple of games, like she might be on the way back, and let's hope she is. It's that type of return that you don't need to see because it's not that good a second serve. Pierce not getting her feet across to the ball, getting the frame of the racket. been so intermittent for her mostly it's been non-existent first game was fine and uh, just a flutter where she broke in the seventh We can't look into the future, but uh, what a different match this may very well have turned out to be up to this stage if Mary Pierce had won that first game where she had three break points. Excellent serving from Hingis. And she's uh, walking serenely on at the moment to be the new queen of world tennis. There's the uh, side of where we are, alongside the MCG, right in there, 15,000 people. An absolutely gorgeous day, 30 degrees around Melbourne Park, on court, temperature 40. And what it is within Mary Pierce, the Lord only knows. She's got to get out of it and start letting her power count. She's got the weapons to turn this around, but is she going to be able to use them? Set down, a game down. exactly what she's done the first six matches thus far, throwing the ball a little bit behind her and getting in a kicked serve. Well, that's not necessarily going to work against Hingis because that goes straight to the backhand of Hingis. Good 
Oh, looks so tight, and there's a familiar shake of the head. She's got to work her way through this. Good, da -da. she can come up with another good point she's got to really feel good about her play thus far in this game it's been a superb game oh yes but last hitting winners Can she do it time after time because you know that Hingis is unaffected by this occasion and he's going to get practically everything back. your event this one no graph no sellers but two girls who have an awful lot of charisma I think it's the best thing that's happened to the women's game for many years and, and of course if Pierce can have the revival which looks like happening not so much in the last set but uh, through the last fortnight then uh, another boost for the women's game shot is almost not on, going over the highest part of the net. She's well inside the baseline. She's actually outside the singles line. Creates her own angle down the line. Well, she's going close. Ball just hit the tape. But close just isn't good enough. Return is no return against Hingis moving so well at the moment. Smile you feel is never far away from her face and uh, couldn't be further away from Pierce's at the moment. And that's the problem. Of course, the scoreline and what's happened in the last 40 minutes or so. Uh, increases that. At her best, Mary is an awesome sight and awesome to play. But her best just isn't happening at the moment. The only way she's going to play at her very best is to be so confident that she's 100% relaxed. And as soon as she loses about 5% of that, she stiffens up, which is natural, it's not a... But because she hits the ball so flat, when she stiffens up the timing goes and there's no margin of error if she were a heavy topspin player you can afford to stiffen up a little bit miss hit a few balls but they still go in and with the heavy topspin they might end up being a decent uh, 
a decent stroke for her. That's what the champion will receive. And Martina Hingis at the moment looks like she's going to be the youngest ever winner of that trophy. One, two. Contrast in their movement couldn't be more marked. It's unreal, isn't it? I mean, the contrast in their movement, contrast in the tactics that are going on. Certainly, Pierce is either winning the points because she's coming out with the outright winner. If she doesn't do that, she's in all sorts of trouble, and she's just not quick enough to catch up to anything that Hingis throws at her. But what a magnificent point! few sporadic fabulous shots a little bit late uh, beginning that uh, replay but she only had to take one step to get to the return of serve and she struggled to do it okay it was a powerful return of serve but she's still too stiff she just cannot relax where it's no fun to watch either. You know what's going through her mind. First ace. And give Hingis her credit. Playing as well as she is at the moment, she's just about the worst player to play against. Someone like a rancher who keeps getting the ball back, making you hit that one more shot, which is always going to be under suspicion. Oh. She still has uh, whatever it takes to get hacked off when uh, she doesn't hit a ball in. She's uh, very, very surprised when she misses a ball, but it's it's interesting to see how she's still got that killer instinct, even though she knows her opponent is struggling. And it's a grand slam, and the opportunity's there for her to win her first grand slam singles. She doesn't appear to be overly nervous, does Martina Hingis. I ticked her off when she was uh, sarcastically applauding the line judge about five games ago because uh, I love her her instincts on court. I just thought that was a little bit uh, too much to take. She ha does have a killer instinct, and yet it's another remarkable factor about her is that she kills you so softly and with such a sweet smile. <laughs> and that's worse. <laughs> It's having a little look, but uh, you can't really object if you don't play a bad point. 
but your opponent plays a superb one and that was a superb one right on the line I always say, uh, Simon, there's no shame in being beaten, but there is a big shame in you losing. So if your opponent is too good, hey, what can you do about it? Other than try. but then was trying too hard and that's what's going on at the moment yes when i say try you know i mean don't give up yeah. you know i mean uh, you've got to try to get yourself into the match you don't just say oh well i you know my opponent's too good so i may as well just lie down and play dead that's not what you do you just try to work something out try to win but if the opponent's too good they're too good Third double. Again, that instinct that you talked about, read it so well. As Pierce needed to go cross court or lob, the uh, down the line was open, but it was so quickly closed. Well, it was uh, her first real opportunity, and to be honest, she didn't look close to taking it. Hingis now is just three games away from winning her first Grand Slam title. Harry Pierce, 2-3. And a set down here in the final of the Australian Open 1997. Pierce has gotten 10 first serves in out of 13 service points in this set and she's going to have to keep serving like that. Yep. Now the first point, she went for a fairly big first serve and won it. Second point, she went for the kick serve to the backhand and was on the defensive straight away. She ga she's going to have to keep going fairly big and fairly often. No! But the big thing for me is here's a girl who's possibly the strongest ever woman's player. I know we were talking about Margaret Court before. For me, she's even stronger. She's being outpowered here by a girl who's, um, well, she doesn't look anything like her physique. Tiny little thing, really. Mm -hmm. And it's all to do with timing. Mm -hmm. And confidence. to the line judge who uh, perhaps hasn't always called what might have been. A great deal of relief when he did call. <laughs> No. 
just so natural. Not bad tactics to, to give the change of pace on that slice forehand, but you need to direct it a little bit better. This is the first game since the first game of the match that's gone past Deuce. that a few times hasn't she seems like she uh, misjudges the speed of the ball coming to her and she's a little bit late on it every time and as a result she's not getting enough height and hitting the tape Bigger double hander, she's hit. In the first game of the match on Hingis' serve, Pierce had three break points. She didn't capitalize on them. And now in this game, she's had this is her third game point. Oh no, Mary. That was no kind of shot really. That was absolutely nothing. She needed to really play a love volley. Perhaps she needed to be a little bit closer to the net. Let's have a look and see where she is. She doesn't go far enough forward, and then she doesn't do anything with that forehand volley. But then we look on the other side of the court, and it was very smart play by Hingers. so clearly and she's executing just as well and this could be the beginning of the end now for Pierce as Bob says three chances to win this game and now Pierce with break point for 4-2 Hingis break point for 4-2 smiles down at her almost in a patronizing fashion but that was much better stuff from Pierce well, I don't want to say this is what Martina is doing but I know a few players who smile on the tennis court but under their breath they're swearing like the Dickens <laughs> the fact that she's able to smile certainly goes down well with the public
just about said it all really those last couple of points a really dreadful double fault and then the drop shot which barely reached the net barely well it's the second serve barely reached the net as well so clearly she is out of sorts with herself and perhaps she's out of sorts with her opponent as well just not letting her settle down Ingus coming up with just enough good shots and there are plenty of them where Pierce feels under pressure at all times 4-2 On her day, she can beat anyone in the world with them playing at their best. She's that good. And she's been that good here, but not in the final. similar yet there are a lot of things that are different one thing that's different is that Hingis has had five opportunities to break the Pierce serve and has done it three times Pierce has had six opportunities to break serve and has only done it once say for Mary it's just not got any better in fact at times it's threatened to get worse but we focus so much on the problems in her head let's uh, rejoice in this talent she's played very very well Martina here again she's done what she's had to do on the way to the final sometimes she hasn't looked spectacular she looked brilliant in the semi-final and uh, come the big moment she hasn't let herself down no she hasn't let herself down uh, she could go all the way back to the very first round where she was a bit lucky to win because it was a tight match or she should she could go to the match against Appleman where I believe that Appleman should have won the match Appleman's actually threw the match away but if you can eliminate that little bit of luck and you need a little bit of luck to win any Grand Slam if you eliminate that luck Mary Pierce has played well and, and she has in playing well she has been able to dominate the majority of her opponents and when she dominates she's almost unbeatable in the women's game she has tried to dominate she's been too uptight in my opinion to dominate but she continues to try to dominate but she's up against an opponent who's dominating her serving now to stay in the match closely on the first oh. Oh, yeah. well, the sun is not a problem 
because the sun is on her left hand side so the sun's not a problem it's just that she's suddenly throwing the ball back behind her again trying to kick it but she's not getting the kick she's getting the ball too flat so nothing's pulling the ball down Too good, yet again. Three match points for Martina Hingis. To become the youngest Grand Slam champion in the Open era. What a girl. You summed it up beautifully, Simon. What a girl. She is a girl. And uh, what a player, man, and what a future. And she certainly looks like she has that future, but she's got her head screwed on right, her mum's got her head screwed on right, and she's going to be brilliant for the game of tennis in the future. Mary has to remember the positive things from this tournament. It's been a terrific comeback for her and may well be the platform for a major year. She had a dreadful year last year, but what, what is going to become of Martina Inga? She's just signed a $7.5 million endorsement with Sergio Cattacchini, which uh, I think becomes a 11 or 12 million when she becomes world number one, which I guess is going to be down the road somewhere. Steffi Graf may have a thing or two to say about this. Over she goes now to her mother. Great scenes. And with the demise of Steffi in this tournament, she has been a major story. And let's hope she continues to be so throughout 1997. We'll be back for the presentation right after this commercial break. Welcome back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it takes two to make a match. And, and here's the presentation to uh, Pierce Mary Pierce and Martina Hingis. She won through Gary six exciting contests to reach the centre court on this final day in the Women's Championship, but uh, was outgunned today by Martina Hingis. But let me remind you that Mary herself, during this tournament, celebrated just her 22nd birthday. I know she'll be back again. Please welcome her as she accepts the runner-up trophy for the 1997 Ford Australian Open Championship. What a contrast to two years ago. So much has happened before then and uh, after. But she's back in the big time. And she must remember that. The runner-up check from Mr. David Morgan from the Ford Motor Company. And the trophy. And a small Aussie gift from the President of Tennis Australia, Mr. Jeff Pollard. One of the most popular visitors here, ladies and gentlemen, Mary Pierce. Wow. <laughs> 
Well, first I'd like to congratulate Martina. Uh, she played a great match today and great tennis during the two weeks, and um, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of that in the future. Congratulations. Obviously, I'm a little bit disappointed in losing today. Um, you know, winning here two years ago, I know what that feels like, and I really wanted that badly today, but um, Martina played just a great match. Too good for me today. Um, but this is definitely one of my favorite tournaments. I always have fun coming here and playing and competing. Uh, you know, the weather's usually great here, and um, I always have a lot of fun. Um, I'd like to thank Paul Nackney and all his staff. Uh, for making this such a wonderful and special tournament for me. Um, also the Corel WTA Tour, all the sponsors for Tennis Australia, um, and all the others of course. And um, all the ball boys, all the ball girls, and of course the Lions people. <laughs> Set one. You have to thank them too. <laughs> And also I'd like to thank everybody and say hi to everyone at home that's watching me, um, and especially my mom and my brother. Um, I'd also like to say a few words in French just to everyone in France. Um, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, merci beaucoup de rester debout très tôt le matin pour m'encourager uh, à la télé. Uh, à très bientôt à Paris. And last, but not least, um, all my friends and everybody over there who's been with me and cheering me on the whole two weeks every day um, for supporting me. Thank you very much. Um, also, all my fans here and um, all of you for coming out during these two weeks. <laughs> You guys have been um, really great. Thank you very much for being there for every one of my matches. Um, you guys have really helped me a lot. Thank you. She did okay. She did her job. She must have been dying inside. And I hope, and I hope to see you next year also. Um, last but not least, my coach and my friend, Sven. Thank you. I said everything. I usually forget something, but I um, guess I'll let Martina talk now. What? <laughs> what? Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you next year. Hopefully one better. She didn't forget anybody. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of popular visitors to Australia, I think everybody has been captivated by the uh, open, engaging, innocent smile of Martina Hingis these past several weeks in Australia. But that hides an iron-willed innocence that we saw displayed here on the centre court today to capture the Australian Open singles champion for 1997. Please welcome the Swiss whiz, Martina Hingis. What a moment for her, and uh, you know she's going to achieve an awful lot in her career, but she'll never forget this. From David Morgan, a check in excess of a half million Australian dollars. Chicken and feed for her. Actors trophy for the Australian Open Women's Absolutely. Singles Champion. Martina Hingis. What a credit she is to her mother, to her country, and to tennis. <laughs> so she should take more pride in that than the half a million dollars. Yeah, first of all, I would like to congratulate Mary too for her great performance during all, all this tournament. She just 
great, uh, had a great comeback this week, and she just played great tennis. She made a really hard life to meet this at this tournament, and especially in the finals. Congratulations. Not hard enough, Mary Stenko. Then special thanks to my mother, which has supported me all these 14 years I was practicing, and she just made everything. <laughs> 15 years maybe. <laughs> no, she just started as I was two years old and I just started walking and she gave me the record and put it and just play. <laughs> so and thank you for everything and all these people which helped me out this week too. Um, just thank you all the crowd. It was just great support these two weeks for me and I always love to come here to Australia and it's a great win for me and I always like to come back and just win another title and yesterday I had already won in my doubles so next time I have to play mixed doubles so maybe <laughs> I'm going with that too. <laughs> but I gotta get, give somebody the chance to win another win too. <laughs> And <laughs> <She's right. laughs> um, just thank you, Paul McNamee, which made just this great tournament organization was just great, and all the stuff which helped out to make this wonderful tournament to me. And I'm just very happy I could play great tennis out here. And thank you. Um, for sure, I'm gonna be back here next year and defend my title. Thanks. Wow. And yesterday, almost forgotten in the. Uh drama of today of course she won the women's doubles with Natasha Zvereva her second Grand Slam title this her third her first singles no doubt about it ladies and gentlemen she is the present and the future of women's tennis Martina Hingis she's won two championships here the doubles and the singles titles and of course last year won the Wimbledon women's doubles championship as well it's and she's a natural age. player Three and a natural Grand talker Slam as well titles. Yeah, she did very very well in that interview she forgot to thank a few people but who can blame her I mean she is absolutely beside herself and I'm a little bit surprised that she could even speak but she's that phenomenal. It could be an absolutely massive year for her, and it started in the best possible way. It wasn't a classic, but in Martina Hingis, we have a classic champion. Yeah, it's the old story. She didn't play that well, but she played well enough to win, and that's all she had to do. It wasn't a classic match, which is a pity because we thought it might be, but we also had fears that it wouldn't be. That's it. Goodbye for now. Hope you can join us for the men's final. Sampras against Moya tomorrow.